Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Fox. I'm a researcher on the Coboge project, but also a practicing architect. I have my own small architectural practice. And um, one of the benefits of being part of the Coboge building was that I also got to, to be part of um, delivering the first Coboge building in the UK. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through the construction process, uh, the design process, and uh, kind of the, all of the different stages to kind of completing the uh, Coboge building at Plymouth. The primary aim of the project was to demonstrate the material. Until this point, our research centered around small scale material samples and slightly larger one to one scale wall buildups in our laboratory for structural load bearing testing. However, to ask a commercial client to trust our materials tested in the laboratory takes a tremendous leap of faith. So we thought, right, we need to approach the university and just say, well, we're winning all of these awards. We're we're being very successful with what we're doing through the Cobos research project. Is there an opportunity for us to then build a prototype building to demonstrate this material in reality? Unfortunately, the university agreed um, and they came up with a site um, and they sort of asked us that we, need, we needed to connect our building with the Sustainable Earth Institute, which is an organization with the University of Plymouth, which specializes with sustainable research and development. And they also wanted us to try and use natural building materials wherever possible. So we were kind of challenged with not only looking at the Coboge material, but also seeing how this building would be constructed, but using sort of low embodied energy materials and other natural, natural materials as well. So wanting us to connect with the Sustainable Earth Institute, the university allocated us a former car park site. Whilst this was great for connecting to the Sustainable Earth Institute, immediately to the south of the site was a 12 storey halls of residence building. This meant for large parts of the day, the site was in shadow due to the overshading from this large building. And we started the design process and sort of working together as part of um, the wider Coboge project team and as us as architects just sort of trying to think about well what would we want to try and achieve thinking about connectivity with the sustainable earth institute uh, testing the design and working with quite a tight budget so the budget for uh, the project was roughly about a quarter of a million pounds that we got uh, to try and deliver a classroom that would serve a sustainable earth institute but also provide us with an opportunity to test the Coboge material in, in a live scenario so we started working through the final design um, and thinking about, well, how practically can we build this building? How many lifts of form we might need? How the contractor might move material around on site? But essentially the basic design was to build a classroom, a standalone building. Um, and whereas in France, they've got lots of sharp edges, we thought, right, well, we're gonna try and implement a curve. It's not necessarily an architectural aesthetic that all architects are fond of, but um, some clients will come to you and, and maybe seek out a curve. So we thought, right, we better see if we can demonstrate that. We've also got the sort of more traditional crisp edges and thinking about how we might fit windows and doors in um, and having that good eaves overhang and a good plinth at the bottom. So uh, kind of complying with the conventions of traditional cob buildings and trying to learn from that and going kind to of bring that into the 21st century. Following the design process, the next stages of the project were to seek planning permission and building control consent. As this was the first building to be constructed out of Coboge in the UK, we wanted to work closely with the building control officers. To do this, we invited the entire team from Plymouth City Council to come and have a look at our laboratory. In doing so, we were able to allay any fears or concerns and answer the questions that they might have as we go through the building control permission process. So we got this car park site um, and one of the first things we did was a GPR survey, uh, which is ground penetrating radar. And this is to try and work out where all of the kind of the buried services were and other different bits and pieces below the ground. As well as kind of working out all the site contextual information, uh, we were also working through construction details and starting to think about, okay, so how do we actually physically build using Coboge? We'd worked through all of the, the material processes, we'd optimized the material, we'd worked out what the U value might be. Um, but how does it all go together? How, how might you detail the eaves? How might you work out what the, what the window detail is gonna be and the foundation detail? So working very closely with Barry Honeyset, so Barry Honeyset 
was the structural engineer for the project. Um, and other members of the uh, Cobos team, we kind of worked through a series of uh, details um, and trying to work out how we might actually build this building. Once the construction information was prepared by the design team, the university went out to competitive tender on the contract for this project. The chosen form of procurement was a traditional contract. Following the competitive tendering process, a main contractor was selected. This was Chris Noakes Construction, who is aided by Paul Barclay, who is a cob builder based in the southwest of England. Having Paul Barclay on the team with Chris was invaluable, especially since Paul Barclay had recently completed his own cob house. So, everything is correct. We're all ready to go. Breaking ground um, in June 2021, um, and then starting to form the plinth in July 2021 as well. Kind of got out the ground relatively easy, um, which was a relief. Uh, there wasn't anything too sinister as we were kind of going through. Um, and then once the plinth was formed, the guys were then fixing the first lift of formwork. We used two lifts of formwork, and it's just timber studs with a stainless steel mesh. And here we are with the first lift of Cobos going in. Um, and that was in the summer, but unfortunately we were nearing winter. So we decided we needed a full scaffold roof to kind of cover over the construction site. And this is perfect because it allowed the guys to continue working throughout the winter. Um, and you know, we, we were kind of constrained by this project because of the program and the university wanting us to complete by a certain date. So we had no choice but to, to work through the autumn and, and close to the winter time. We had to think of uh, an ingenious way of kind of overcoming these problems. OK, so whilst the, the scaffolding was going up, um, we needed to mix the material off site. So the, the soil from the site wasn't necessarily suitable. Uh, so we sourced our materials from elsewhere around Devon, and that was all mixed off site by a cob mixer. Um, and uh, we turned into traditional cob so it's just a straw with uh, clay rich subsoil um, whilst being mixed on site we undertook some very simple drop ball tests uh, just to sort of confirm the, the mixture quality and to check that it was all okay once we got the the material to site that was then bucketed up onto the scaffolding the guys the, with the contractor started by using um, mechanization, but because of the really tight site, it just proved ineffective um, and sort of manual labor was the way to go for this project. Uh, and the material here just being forked into place. Uh, here's someone's placing it in between a placement tool. So this um, plywood box former, which is the placement tool, and it just helps to separate the structural cob from what the space which will then be there for the thermal cob so you've got the two sides there so it's not rammed earth but what we're doing is using the end of a matic handle or by foot just taking out air gaps cavities and just sort of you know helping to sort of position the structural cob into place getting it ready so that placement tool is then removed and then uh, we're left with a nice sort of shuttered face ready to accept the thermal cob so here we go, moving on to the thermal cob. We take a raw subsoil, this uh, very clay rich subsoil as you might imagine from that video there. Uh, we then wet it down and turn this material into a slip. So we've got these big vats and then we've got mechanical agitation which just turns it into a really nice viscous material. We're then taking uh, large bundles of hemp, so it's hemp shiv. Um, and then we're mixing the hemp shiv in a large mixer at a quantity of about one bucket of slip to three buckets of hemp shiv. So three to one ratio. And you, as it's mixing, you're thinking that the slip's never going to cover it. But as you can see, the slip does cover it and it ends up with a really nice sort of um, light, fluffy um, material. It's like breakfast cereal, really. <laughs> um, so then this is uh, taken up onto the scaffolding, uh, placed between the formwork and this is where the formwork really comes into its own. Without the formwork, this material would just fall down and you'd kind of lose it within seconds. The formwork holds it in position. Again, it's just tamped down the end of a matic handle and filled in place until it meets the level of the structural layer. Whilst the two sides of the Cobbage composite hold together generally very well, we didn't want to take any chances and decided that it was important to try and strengthen that junction with a natural wall tie. 
For this, we used hemp straw laid at right angles across the two layers of cobbage material. This helped reinforce corners to bond the two together, the two layers together. Now, for the windows and door openings, we used boxes, sort of framed boxes, which were positioned between the formwork, and it just allowed the contractor to just keep laying the cobbage around those formers. Um, and here it is with the, the, the formwork taken off. So we've got the two lifts of formwork coming away. Um, really quite straightforward to remove the formwork. And you're kind of left with this really nice textured surface. It's quite attractive, the surface that's left behind, although the, the university prefers a more polished finish. Here we've got um, a lintel that uh, the barrier design. So completed the walls, uh, end of November 2021. And as a sort of celebration, we had a bit of a topping out ceremony. Most people top out the completion of a roof. We topped out the completion of the walls. That was the most important part for us. Um, but the roof was kind of progressing from that stage on. Um, we had uh, sarking boards over the top of the rafters. Um, and on top of the sarking boards, we had um, a zinc standing seam roof. The university very keen for low maintenance material, so um, a zinc standing seam was, was quite a favourable solution for them. Um, sheep's wool insulation with wood fibre insulation as well under slung, um, so trying to use natural materials to, to kind of give a good performance there. For building services, once the cobbage walls were exposed, the contractor came in and chased out the services so that then they could kind of get in um, some different conduits and, and wires and things like that. Windows and doors were fitted in, in January, and they were just strapped back to the cob, sitting on timber bearers. And here's a, a detail of the uh, window, so a timber frame, triple glazed. Um, okay, this image shows uh, some window reveals being insulated to minimize cold bridging at the sides. Um, and here we've got building services routing through the ceiling. So trying to keep the services as much as possible in the ceiling rather than through the walls. It just helps for uh, future maintenance. So here we are getting ready for clay plastering um, and just sort of preparing all the walls. And what we had was that clay plaster that went on in two layers, a clay plaster from a company called Clay Works in Cornwall. Um, and that was then finished sort of around about April time. The scaffolding came down shortly after April. Um, it was a really nice moment because it revealed the building in all its in all its glory. Again, the texture is really nice, and, and it, I would be quite happy to leave it as it is. Um, but uh, university looking for that kind of crisp finished product needed. Uh, they wanted it to go for a, a lime render, so we had it lime rendered April 2022, um, and then pretty much short, shortly after that point. We reached practical completion, uh, July 2022, um, and that was largely the, the end of the building contract. Helping to record the construction process, we had two time-lapse cameras positioned strategically around the site, one on an adjacent building and one within the scaffolding. These helped to capture the entire construction process and were invaluable at showing us the length of time it took to construct certain parts of a Cobbage building. We were able to then compare this photographic data with our construction program to see how accurate we were at predicting how long it would take to complete certain parts of the building. We also used the time-lapse cameras to chart the drying process and subsequent shrinkage of the cobbage walling over time. This is a, a virtual tour. Hopefully this comes up OK on the video, but uh, this, this, is, this was taken a couple of days ago. So walking into the cobbage building as it stands now. So it's a multi-purpose sort of classroom space. It's set out at the moment for a meeting room. So it's a meeting room for about 12 to 15 people. Uh, the university have gone very heavy with IT since COVID, so it's got lots of audio visual and hearing loops and cameras. In this video, you can see some sensors on the walls. We've got heat flux sensors measuring the in-situ U-value of the walls. Volumetric water content sensors embedded within the centre of the walls, which are monitoring the drying process and drying rate of the construction. 
We have indoor air quality monitors measuring the total VOCs, particulate matter, CO2 levels and relative humidity levels. And we've also undertaken several air tightness tests using a range of different equipment. But some of the lighting we've got in here, so LED, uh, Zimtabel, circadian rhythm lighting. We've got a very low powered 1.4 kilowatt power, powered electric panel heater. Um, for the floor, we've got uh, natural slate flooring. Um, this video is showing the, uh, the clay plaster with the, uh, the, the timber windows. Here we can see some of the sensors that are dangling through the, the walls, some wood block sensors. And then on the ceiling, we've got a wood wall board, so a troll tech wood wall board. Externally, so we've uh, finished off the project with uh, some landscaping, which is now growing. It was by Mike Wesley Design. Um, and it just sort of helped to tie in the Cobbage building with the SCI, so the Sustainable Earth Institute, and the wider campus. And one of the, the, the biz business aims for this project was to create a garden. So around the back, you could go and for place for sort of breakout meetings and things like that. Overall, this was a thoroughly successful building project. It helped to demonstrate the innovative Cobbage building material that had been developed through the Cobbage research project and certainly paves the way for future Cobbage buildings. Thank you for watching.